Tonight we will be having Frank Dog and um, Kenny Anola, the head save to the Minister of Sports and Youth. Yes, Minister of Sports and Youth. Yeah. Um, we are waiting for our guests to come in and we will start very briefly. Thank you so much. Introducing Social Banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. So, I understand your name is Frank Donga. Is that correct? Donga. Okay, Mr. Frank. You're here for a visa application. Is that correct? No, no, ma. It's visa. I've already done the application. That's what I said. The visa application. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. The visa. I need visa. I, I apply online. I've done the application online. How long do you intend to stay, Mr. Donga? As, as soon as we are finished, I go. They say it can't take longer. No, no. How long do you intend to stay in my country, Mr. Donga? Ah, okay, ma'am. I can't stay long. I have something doing. You understand? Soonest. Soonest. Once I come back, I have a lot of things doing. Can you give us a time estimation, Mr. Donga? Ma. Can you give us a length of time for which you'll be away, Mr. Donga? No, I can't be away, ma. As soonest. Once I finish everything, I, I return. Can you convince me that you'll return? Ah, I can convince you, ma. I can convince you. Why would you return, Mr. Donga? Ah, ma. You know this place is not my place. Then anybody that is like market, you go to the market, you have to come back. You go, then you come back. So that's the thing. That's the plan. That's the plan. It's already there. Okay, what do you do for a living, Mr. Donga? You say? What type of work do you do? I'm a professional, man. I'm a professional. And somebody that is a professional now. Any work. Why would you like to visit my country? Yes, ma'am. It's like... Since when I am small, I've always have it in mind that abroad is a place that anybody who is a professional, anybody once you get to a professional level, you go to abroad, by the time you come back, your listening is not ordinary again. So that's the thing. Because by the time, even as you understand... Stay, stay seated, no, ma'am, because I want to show you. As I was growing up, I have it in mind that when the time I travel to abroad and as a professional I come back, that's it, ma'am. Tell me why you'd like to visit my country, Mr. Donga. The, because if you had, America is a place that any a professional he has to kneel down and pray. That once you go to abroad, America, you come back, your distance is no longer the same. V, I visit all the important area. Martin Luther King, Washington DC, all these people. What, because you have to know them. Mr. Donga. Yes, ma'am. We give out British visas here, Mr. Donga. This is the British Embassy. You can help me, you can give me that one too, ma'am. Because. British. I, I can go, then I'll come back to you. You can give me. Thank you very much, Mr. Donga. Thank you, ma'am. Should I collect it now? You can go down, Mr. Donga. I should wait for that. Ma, 
You say I should wait. It may sound safe, but we can't all be special. It may sound safe, but we can't all be special. We can't, no. Some will be farmers. Some will be politicians. The man who sold my gown is a doctor. Make the best down. Yeah. Are they pay, being paid a hazard allowance for the job that they are doing? I am not aware of it. It might sound safe, but we can't all be specialists. We can't, no. Some will be farmers, some will be politicians. The man who sold my gown is a doctor. He makes the best gown. Are they pay, being paid a hazard allowance for the job that they are doing? I am not aware of it. Um, we are so very sorry for wasting time. Um, Mr. Frank Dogan will join us very soon. He's um, trying to connect to the um, studio. Uh, 
we are so very sorry for wasting your time viewers um we'll be here with you shortly so very very sorry Baby Lano, come. Mampa. What's that in your hand? Bring it. This is bitter leaf now. Ah, vegetable of elders. What? What about that one? Is that not scent leaf? Bring oh, it. Wait a second. I'm just wasting vegetable. Hey, you know for Euro. You know for Lata. This one I use it to prepare for lockdown. What? You don't know. You somebody prepare this one now. You put locust beans. You put onion. On fish with crayfish. When you say pepper, you say presence. Sir. You put two spoon of pepper. You pour the whole thing. Preach. You put dry fish. You put shower and agudo. Face my face. You. Cut fish head. Everybody balance together. Add for more. Carry goes with the jello jello part of the leg. Soup done done. And for lockdown. Ah! It's just that I don't have pepper. I don't have fish. I don't even have a hoy. Baby Lando, come. Mampa. What's that in your hand? Bring it. This is bitter leaf now. Ah, vegetable of elders. What? What about that one? Is that not scent leaf? Bring oh, it. Wait a second. I just wasting vegetable. Hey, you know for euro. You know for lata. This one I use it to prepare for lockdown. What? You don't know. You somebody prepare this one now. You put locust beans. You put onion. On fish with crayfish. When you say pepper, you say presence. You pour two spoon of pepper. You pour the whole thing. Preach. You put dry fish, you put shower and agudo, face my face, you. cut fish head, everybody balance together. Add for more, you carry goes with the jello jello part of the leg. Soup done done, and for lockdown. Ah! It's just that I don't have pepper, I don't have fish, I don't even have a hoy.
It may sound safe, but we can't all be specialists. We can't, no. Some will be farmers. Some will be politicians. The man who sold my gown is a doctor. He makes the best gown. Are they pay, being paid a hazard allowance for the job that they are doing? I am not aware of it. Baby Lalo, come. Mampa. What's that in your hand? Bring it. This is bitter leaf now. Ah, vegetable of elders. What? What about that one? Is that not scent leaf? Bring oh, it. Wait a second. I just wasting vegetable. Hey, you know it for euro. You know it for latter. This one I use it to prepare for lockdown. What? You don't know. You somebody prepare this one now. You put locus beans. You put onion. On fish with crayfish. When you say pepper, you say present sir. Mm. You put a spoon of pepper. You pour the whole thing. Preach. You put dry fish. You put shower and agudo. Face my face. You. Catfish head. Everybody balance together. Add for mom. You carry goes with the jello jello part of the leg. Soup done done. Or for lockdown. Ah! It's just that I don't have pepper. I don't have fish. I don't even have a hoy. Introducing social banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. So, I understand your name is Frank Donga. Is that correct? Donga. Okay, Mr. Frank. You're here for a visa application. Is that correct? No, no, ma. It's visa. I've already done the application. That's what I said. The visa application. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. The visa. I need visa. I, I apply online. I've done the application online. How long do you intend to stay, Mr. Donga? As, as soon as we are finished, I go. They say it can't take long. No, no. How long do you intend to stay in my country, Mr. Donga? Ah, okay, ma'am. I can't stay long. I have something to do. You understand? Soonest. Soonest. Once I come back, I have a lot of things to do. Can you give us a time estimation, Mr. Donga? Ma. Can you give us a length of time for which you'll be away, Mr. Donga? No, I can't be away, ma. As soon as, once I finish everything, I, I return. Can you convince me that you'll return? Ah, I can convince you, ma. I can convince you. Why would you return, Mr. Donga? Ah, ma. You know this place is not my place. Then anybody that is like market, you go to the market, you have to come back. You go, then you come back. So that's the thing. That's the plan. That's the plan. It's already there. Okay, what do you do for a living, Mr. Donga? You say? What type of work do you do? I'm a professional, man. I'm a professional. And somebody that is a professional now. Any work. Why would you like to visit my country? Yes, ma'am. It's like... Since when I'm small, I've always have it in mind that abroad is a place that anybody who is a professional, anybody once you get to a professional level, you go abroad, by the time you come back, your listening is not ordinary again. So that's the thing. Because by the time, even as you it's understand... It's, it's it's no, ma'am, because I want to show you. As I was growing up, I have it in mind that when the time I travel to abroad then as a professional, I come back, that's it, ma. Tell me why you'd like to visit my country, Mr. Donga. The, because 
if you have, America is a place that any professional he has to kneel down and pray that once you go to abroad, America, you come back, your destiny is no longer the same. I visit all the important area. Martin Luther King, Washington DC, all these people. What, because you have to know them. Mr. Donga. Yes, ma'am. We give out British visas to Mr. Donga. This is the British Embassy. You can help me, you can give me that one too, ma'am. Because. British. I, I can go, then I'll come back to you. You can give me. Thank you very much, Mr. Donger. Thank you, ma'am. Should I collect it now? You can go down, Mr. Donger. I should wait as I. Ma. You say I should wait. It might sound safe, but we can't all be specialists. We can't, no. Some will be farmers. Some will be politicians. The man who sold my gown is a doctor. He makes the best gown. And they pay, being paid a hazard allowance for the job that they are doing. I am not aware of it. Hi guys, my name is Samuel Somiwa. I'm here today to introduce to you what we call Genodomobile.com. Genodomobile.com is a recharge and build payment platform where you can pay for all your bills, including DSTV, GoTV, StarTime, and also Nepa bills. You know, why our platform is very different from other platforms is that you get commission on every of your recharges. I advise you to go to www.genodomobile.com to register now. The first aspect is to register, the second aspect is to fund your wallet. And you can get for as low as 500 naira for one gig, and you also get 1,000 naira for two gig, and you can even get more on other SME data. To be a part of this amazing offer, log on to www.jindobobai.com to get started.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Frank Dungan on the building. Wow, <laughs> good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. I'm so, so sorry I'm joining late. My unreserved apologies. It's been a crazy day. I literally jumped out of a vehicle. I rushed down to the office to quickly set me up. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, oh yes, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you very much for having so me on the much. show. Yes, sir. I really appreciate you, sir. I really appreciate you. Ah, uh, wow, wow. So to go straight down to, uh, so we not waste your time. Can you please, uh, um, just a short introduction of yourself? And we know that you are a comedian, you are a creative, and someone like that. But can you just give us a talking about yourself, sir? Okay, sorry, let me quickly just adjust the, I think there's a shadow on my face. These are some of the things with technology. You have to yeah. get used to them, man. <laughs> uh, if actually, if you don't mind, let me just uh, get someone to adjust the lights. The, we'll just put up the okay. lights a little bit. Okay. Uh, my friends call me Frank Donga. I'm a comic actor and sketch comedian. And uh, I'm a digital content creator. I miss other things I do. I started from being a cinematographer and editor. And then... Uh, of course, my background was in agriculture, first degree, and my master's degree, I studied animal genetics. So basically, I'm a farmer, a wow. geneticist, and a digital con content creator, as well as an actor and comedian. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really that much. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow, wow. Great one, sir. I really love that. Yeah. So hand over to Mr. Jeremiah. To anchor this section, Mr. Jerry, uh, Jeremiah, are you there? Okay, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Atosi. Yeah, you are welcome, Mr. Frank Doga. Thank you <laughs> very a, much, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure you know, meeting uh, you. Yeah, you know, you know, I just saw the way you switch from your comic roles to, you know, to, to a professional now, and <laughs> it, it, is, it is really commendable, sir. Okay, so I'll be going straight to the first question, sir. Okay, sir, so you, are, you are one very intelligent comedian in the comedy scene, I mean, in the comedy space of Nigeria. How do you do this effortlessly, sir? Um, I, I know you combine comedy with, um, you know, intelligently solving societal problems. You know, I know, I know. Um, your well, some of your series is based on um job and unemployment in Nigeria, and you have been trying to use you know comedy to you know portray that part of the society and see what people can. How do you combine it together, comedy and trying to solve real time problems, sir? Well, life itself is a mix. Mm. No person's life is full of tragedy totally. There will be some happy mm. moments, some sad moments. Um. And just like every other thing you have, in, you have in life, you have the good and the bad. You have the sweet and the bitter. So mm. even on your tongue, you have several parts of the, of the tongue that are sensitive, especially to different uh, sensory input. You have the sweet and sour part, the salty, the sugary part of your tongue. So I just uh, draw from life itself. Combining humor and uh, moral lessons or... Uh, solving societal problems like you said it's, it comes nat quite naturally to me because i find a way to see humor in things that are not necessarily comedy and i find a way to bring lessons out of things that are actually funny so mm. i think it generally it comes from within but it's also the way i look at life no matter how bad something is there's a good part to it and no matter how good something it is if you look very carefully you might find something that is not so pleasing about it so that's why it's so easy for me. I look at society, I look at what is happening, and I look at the comedy kangu to tell the story. Basically, it's a gift from God, and I appreciate God for that. Uh, but beyond that, it's also generally a reflection of our lives as individuals. Wow, wow. Thanks, thanks so much, sir, for that answer. You know, I agree with you that it's actually a gift, you know, for you, because there are many comedians outside, and, you know, most of the jokes we get these days are just, you know, Common jokes, jokes are well, but then yours, yours is very special. Being that you know the way you're able to combine these things, it's really. I personally, I watch out for every of your single comedy because I know it's beyond comedy. You know, there's always something more to it. Uh, so we really appreciate you for that, sir. So I'm um, going much. to the uh, going to the second question, sir. 
um, reading through your very insightful profile, and as you said while introducing yourself, um, we discovered that you, you have made several um, transitions in your career. You made mention of the fact that you studied agriculture, uh, you know, agriculture, agricultural science, um, agricultural, you are an agricultural scientist then. You made a transition to journalism, you know, and, and now you're a comedian. So how did you make this transition, sir? Is it just, are you, is it that you are very, um, you are a very exploring person that you just decided to, you know, you know um, explore all these career options? Or how did you make this transition, sir? Life itself is full of transitions. First, you are, oh. you are pregnant, a pregnancy in someone's body. Then you became a little baby. Then you became a child. Then you started working. You became an adult, you know. So life oh. itself is full of transition. I think life is dynamic. Hence, our careers, our choices, our paths also will might be dynamic. And that is what you have seen in me. So it is not unusual. And I'm not the only person who has made transitions in such an area. Life is full of transitions. So the more we embrace it and find how to blend with it, the better for all of us. And also, let me quickly draw out a lesson here before I go deep into answering what you asked. If I can do it, okay. it simply means anybody, anybody else can. The fact that you study something in school or you have a background in something does not limit you in any way from becoming another thing totally different from what you are. You can be a medical doctor and end up being a musician. You can be a musician and end up being a medical doctor. It's all about choices and what you have devoted your energy and your mindset to overcome. So now, specifically to me, I... Started from, I, I've always loved agriculture. I've always loved the process of producing food, rearing animals. I've always just been naturally in love with that. In, with that. So I went to university to study agricultural sciences. And uh, after that, my first, after my first degree, I had intention of going further to do my master's and PhD. And eventually probably lecturing or working as a research scientist, solving many of man's problems in science, food, nutrition, and all that. Or possibly health. But after my first degree, um, I started my master's degree. Then I saw this uh, opportunity online, just online. I didn't know anybody. They just said, we're starting a Pan-African uh, media company. They didn't even say it was journalism. They just said, so if you think you have what it takes to be part of the next level of young professionals in the media, send us an, an essay, not more than 300 words. That was what the you know, job application was, specification was. And here, well, here I was do, during my master's program. I've always wanted to explore media apart from agriculture. I wanted to branch out. You know, I, I'm a very restless person when it comes to adventure. So I love to explore. And I, I love to encourage young people to explore. Don't let anybody cage you in to say your purpose in life is this. No, you are too young for that. Explore. Your purpose in life is to be anything you want to be. So I wanted to explore every... I wanted to, like the saying goes, die empty. You know, make sure I explore every part of you know, my existence. And one of those days when I was in exploring, I explored into radio and, you know, because somebody heard my voice in the master's uh, program while we were doing a seminar and said, ah, your voice sounds like something that could sound good on radio. So I said, yeah, I've been thinking of radio. So I explored and it kind of was going well. Then this opportunity came to work in a pan-African media outfit. And I said, 300 words. Uh -uh. Is this just, just to write 300 words? <laughs> now they don't used to abuse somebody for that now. So I, I wrote the application, sent it. And I got called and I said, wow, you know how to write. And let's talk to you. The first set of, uh, of interviews, I crossed it. The second stage of interview, I crossed it. Before I knew what was going on, I found, my, found myself in media. And they said journalism. I said, wow, journalism. OK, no bad, no bad. I've always wanted to work in media. Let's do this. So I just embraced it. I was excited, you know. So I brought all my experience from, you know, agriculture, production, um, uh, music. Because then in school, I used to be a music director. You know, I brought my experience from science, from music, from the arts, everything I had taught myself. It was useful as a journalist because, as it were, you know, they were looking for somebody who was well read, who was widely read, who knew a lot about it, a little bit about everything, or, you know, that kind of a person. So I seem to know a little bit about a wide range of topics, you know, because I love to read, I love to watch, listen to news, listen to BBC, listen to VUA, even French stations, even Dutch Avella. When I concern me, I will listen, share, on top of the I get knowledge. You know, at first it's not sweet, but later they enjoy them. Say, how more things they happen for this world, do. And that's one thing I also want to encourage young people to be like, you know, to do these days. Explore, you know. Don't just spend all the time, you know, uh, savaging people on social media or participating in uh, entertainment that, uh, you know, takes a lot of your time and resources, your data that will not necessarily give you instant knowledge or reward. I mean, it's good to be entertained and have fun, but then also balance your life, balance your time. So that's what my story in short, you know. So I made that transition. 
from agriculture to journalism. And after that, I almost accidentally, you know, did a skit with some of my friends. And, uh, you know, the skit went viral. The next thing people were asking for more. I did the second one, the third one. And the next thing I started getting calls from movie producers in Nigeria. Some of one of the top female music producers and then the top male producers like, I'm not even an actor. What is going on here? And they, they said, uh, they said have you seen yourself? Uh, have you seen that performance? So I like, why, why? This is, okay. I like to give this a try. This is another phase of my life. Let me, let me, I fought it for a while, but then I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, people seem to like what I was doing. And that's where I am right now. So, a few years from now, I might transit into someone or something else. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, that that's really inspiring. Like, um, your story is a really inspiring one, and I do hope um our viewers, especially young people at home, can learn greatly from it. And so you 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 made mention of uh, movies that you you know you featured in, and I remember vividly wedding party. Yeah, the role you played it. It's it's, a, it's one of the you know one of the. Oh, the funniest part of the movie, and I really enjoyed the video. So, thanks for all you do, sir. So, I'll be moving on to the third question now. So, I want you to give your pro, um, your opinion um, on this um, on this societal issue. You know, it's about um, the negative news. You know, that has been ravaging our country now, um, from the Osh Poppies news and to you know a lot of negative reviews, especially on the international scene. And um, some young Nigerians claim it has been affecting, in fact, it has actually been affecting young Nigerians who are actually, you know, who actually want to make it legally. So I don't know, what is your advice for young people who actually want to be the best in their fields? But, you know, due to the negative news in Nigeria, yeah, how do you get to um, overcome all this to even become the best in their field? So my advice to young people uh, in the midst of all this negative publicity, negative views, and uh, things uh, about Nigerians and young Nigerians, especially in Nigeria and around the world, is do the right thing for yourself. Don't say nobody in the country is supporting it. If you live right in Nigeria, you're not going to be rewarded. Scammers are getting going scot free, corrupt politicians are going scot free. No, if you do it, you do it for yourself, you have peace of mind. You know when a police, police van comes around your neighborhood and you hear, whoa, whoa, your mind is at peace that they're not coming for you, you know, all things being equal. So live right for yourself. You have no one else to blame when you particip participate in fraud and corruption as a politician, as a young person, but yourself. And no matter how far you run, it's just a matter of time. It's going to catch up with you. Look, life is there. Lessons are there all over the place for us to learn from. No matter how good you are and you participate in evil, your 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 pastime or your occupation is to is to cheat a system or cheat a people without any just cause you just delight make people people cause sorrow to people and and living you know outside of uh, of 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 what is right at the end of the day you're going to have yourself to blame but young people definitely is affecting young people especially those who want to do things with folks outside of the country you know remotely they look at you you're in nigeria and the person is ah you're a scammer just keep your head up i have been in situations where i was called by foreign um partners and they wanted to do something they didn't know me and they said we saw your profile online we saw that you do this can you do this for us? i run a production company and they said yes i can do it i said send us your account let's send you money this is the brief one they said no no just send me the details of what you want to do I collected the details of what they wanted to do. I did the job. I didn't even I collect their money until I had done the job and sent the job to them. They were shocked, like, because I wanted to correct the stereotype or the, or the, the notion stereotype. that Nigerians are first stars. Yes, I wanted to know that this time around, I'm not going to take your money, but I will do your job. When you are mm -hmm. satisfied, you can pay me. And I did it to, to clients in South Africa. I did it to clients in, in Dortmund. <laughs> I've done it to clients in Australia. And the, for me, it's just been the best decision. No matter who you are and what you are doing, do it the right way. You won't have any cause for regret. You have instant peace of mind, then your profile, your integrity will speak for you. Integrity at the end of the day, in the long run, is more rewarding, more satisfying, more sustainable than cutting corners and going shortcut way. Wow, wow. Thanks, thanks so much for that advice. It, it will really go a long way, you know, to to help young people out here who are actually in need of this advice. 
Okay, so before I go to the second to the last question, because we don't want to take much of your time. I try to remember um, an advert you did for 80 salad. You know, I don't see on TV where you're in the private jet drinking from a very big cup. <laughs> yeah, so just to appreciate you again for the great things you've been doing. Thank you so much. Okay, so, yeah, so we'll be moving to the second to the last question. Um, so this 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 question is majorly for people that are in the creative space. Majorly people want to do comedy like you or media and entertainment. You know, the Frank Donga brand or um, and the Danny TV brand is actually unarguably one of the most successful brands in the media and entertainment industry. So what is your advice for young creative you know, who actually want to grow to be like you? you know, who actually want to model you? What is your advice? What, you know, what part of your, your secret that you give to them you know, that, can, that can help them to become like you? How to build a successful media and entertainment no. brand? Just for young, young, creative. young creatives who want to go into entertainment, the first thing you need to do is don't go into it because of the money. In fact, don't go into anything because of money. Anything you go into because of money, once the money doesn't come as fast as you want or as much as you want initially, you're going to lose concentration, you're going to lose focus, lose sight, lose energy, lose zest. It's going to become a, a task for you to keep it up. Do it because you enjoy it. What I am doing, I'm not doing it because I thought I was going to... I didn't know I was going to become famous or people are going to like what I was going to do. It was good, was what I uh, was going to do. I just did it because I enjoyed it. I did the kind of comedy I would love to watch. I pick a topic that touches my heart. Unemployment for young people. It touches my heart every day I sleep and wake up. I think about it. How can someone go to school, spend four, five years, seven years in some cases, and then do NY, after NYC, you can't secure a job because the system is not fixed by the people we trust to fix it. So I talk about those issues. Then I, I encourage young ones to you to package yourself, get information. You don't just sit down tweeting on your phone and, you know, uploading pictures on social media that don't, that is not a bad thing but don't spend all your time doing that so pick something that you are naturally good at you understand bounce it off your friends see their reactions it's not everything you feel like you are good at that is actually marketable or is sustainable but look at what you have to offer do you enjoy it number one rule of the game if you enjoy it what do you know about it learn about it i study a lot of comedians internationally and locally i study them so Learn, keep learning, keep learning. Ask questions, ask people who are doing it. Ask people who are doing what you want to go into. You know, ask them questions, study, study, study. And then don't wait till you have a billion naira or a thousand audience. That's where you are with your friend, two people in your family. Do whatever you want to do. You make them the guinea pigs. Test it on them. You want to do into fashion or whatever it is. I was specific about comedy. Crack a joke yeah. or two for your family members. Bring two or three of your friends together and crack the joke. So start where you are, believe in yourself, and then be consistent with it. Don't do something in January and wait till December before you follow it up with another thing. It doesn't mean you should post or do something every second or every month or every week or every day. No. But let there be a rhythm to it. If it's a monthly, fine. If it's once in six months you want to be outputting your content, fine. If it's once a day or once a week, fine. But pick a rhythm and then study about what you are doing. Don't wow. copy anything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So um so this question for me. Um, how do you come in creative of this baby landlord? How did I what? Come in the uh this creative of baby landlord, the comedy yeah, so, of the I mean, it's, it's first of all, I love I love children. I'm always around children, you know. In fact, if you are if you are listening to me right now, you see that I'm yeah, around yeah. children. Children are always yeah. around you. Yeah, so I love children, and uh, you know I think they are fantastic. They are innocent. They are fun to be with. They don't have troubles or sorrows or carry over or baggages like you know, <laughs> baggage like adults do. Uh, and I love watching cartoons, so I am always around kids. Mm, but even then, the Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I watch a lot of animations too. I'm an animator myself. Myself, myself thought to the animator. So, yeah. so I do illustrations. I do cartoons and animations. So anyway, but Baby Landlord is just uh, I thought about creating another direction of comedy where people can learn. I noticed a lot of young people didn't pay attention, attention to detail when it, when, when it came to um, probably information, knowledge, uh, things like grammar, diction. And, you know, I thought, let's try and see what we can do about it. So I created a uh, character who is an, uh, you know, upper class child. In a, from a privileged home who probably was, you know, goes to a very, you know, uh, upper class school, 
had the opportunity to have been maybe born outside the country or lives or travels frequently after the country outside the country so his perspective of life is different is a sharp contrast to frank donga who is a victim of the society and the poor academic system where he is from so we, we put them in conflict with each other so that we can see the contrast between what frank is and what you can be you know we're not saying being foreign is superior to being yourself but we're saying being proper, whatever you want to learn. If it's a local language, learn the local language properly. If it's general information you're after, learn it properly. You know, just have a, a proper thought process and be more organized. So we put baby landlord in contrast to Frank Donga. So baby land is just like any other landlord's child, quote and unquote, who's from a privileged home. And he's always trying to teach Frank Donga what he doesn't know. The boy is innocent. He doesn't even know his roots culturally to be correcting another person. But Frank Donga will not have it. He thinks he knows more because he's just older than baby landlord. And they're always arguing, you know. Very soon, you see one of these kids, you know, that we're going to post about baby landlord again. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just okay. our way of enlightening people about, you know, things of education. And then to carry on, to carry children along, like I love children. And I noticed a lot of children. People, parents will tell me, ah, my child loves you, my children love you. How old are they? Four years old, eight years old, ten years old. Like, wow, a lot of children want to watch the Frank Gonga brand. So we thought, let's do something that uh, children too can learn from. You know, they can hear a baby landlord talk like, you know, their age, and then they can learn from them. For example, one of the episodes, baby landlord, I, I said, uh, I said, hey, come and sing for me. Uh, H-I-P for the for the hippopo. Hippopotamus. Baby landlord said, no, it's hippopotamus. You know, things like, a lot of people, a lot of people realize their school fees was, they, they born school fees because nobody yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah. hippopotamus. It's hippopotamus. <laughs> you will not travel like, and not say, ah, please, where is this? You will not be hearing, pardon, pardon, what does that mean? And you know, it's like, ah, maybe I went to school. No, you didn't go to school. To school. <laughs> school didn't come to you. You know, so it's just a way of bringing that contrast. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, now, this question before I hand over to Mr. Jerry. How do you manage, how, how do you balance your comedy life and lifestyle with family? Basically, it's, it's the decision I had, I had thought all that out before I ever entered full-time entertainment you know i told you my background is i'm a scientist at heart you know and an artist but before i entered full-time entertainment i decided what i would do and what i wouldn't do i decided where i would go and where i wouldn't go i decided uh things i would be part of and things i won't be part of so i was pretty much you know decided in those things before the fame i knew that if i ever find myself that maybe i'm a billionaire somewhere or i become famous ah these are the things i would do i just want to keep my personal life you know personal i want to keep low profile nothing will move me you know, so I had already decided that uh, again. Some people will tell you it's emotional intelligence and blah blah blah. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's I had spoken to myself. And I tell people, talk to yourself. If nobody's talking to you, talk to yourself. Sit down, can I say, call yourself and say, Jerry, you say, huh? It's call yourself and say, say, uh, Tosin, say, huh? This thing we are going to do. If this thing blow, what will you do? The way you told me, the way you're looking at you now, what will be your reaction if I tell you to, to send me your bank accounts and I fold 40 million naira, it's 40 million to your accounts. What is the first thing you are going to do tomorrow morning? Oh, yeah, I want to hear you toasting. Okay, for me, um, I have a business that I want to um planning on. I'll first invest on the business first. Wait, you that... are planning on it? Yes. Do you have a business? Uh... I, have a, I have a proposal. I have my logo on ground. Everything is on ground. I just need the money. Why haven't you started? The money. The money. So the money you need to start is 40 million. No, not 40 million. Okay, so... But <laughs> if so I 40, have... thousand cannot start it. Uh, sir, 40 000 cannot start it. <laughs> what about Jerry? What are you going to do? Okay, uh, so honest, honestly, honest, honest, if I get 40 million, hmm. so I'll, I'll first keep the money safe. You know, I will not... <laughs> thank you very much. You know what? I'm, I'm happy the two of you are falling right into my trap. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You, I, none of you said I will put it into what I'm doing now. It is you. I, I have a plan, an idea, a business. Who told you that business plan is? is I'm not saying your ideas are not. You have not yeah, done it yeah. before. Nobody. Yeah. Knows, Look, I've, I've sold honey. I've, I've I've sold chicken. I've raised goats. I've I've done uh, rabbit. I've uh, what haven't I done? I've done music school. Look, mm -hmm. you don't know. You know how many skits I've done that didn't quote and unquote go viral. Yeah, even the politician also. You know, so I've done some skits that I didn't even consider would go viral. Bam, we were all over the place. People are calling me from mm. all over the world that knew me. I did another skit that was carrying show that I said, Ah, this one will kill them. <laughs> only, 50, only 50 comments. 
<laughs> so you never uh, really know in life. There's no certainty, you know, to mm -hmm. how things are going to be. So the two of you now have just done the perfect thing that I was expecting. 40 million naira in your account tonight. What's the first thing you're doing tomorrow morning? I will, a business I've been thinking of. You will just put that money on it. What if it doesn't come back? You don't know. You have not oh, done it before. Man. You, I will first keep it in the bank. What did the bank liquidate? And they say, I'm oh, sorry, the manager of that bank is owing Amcon. And the Amcon is whatever. I don't know, whatever. So you see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I had decided what I was going to do before I got, went into it. Like, you know, look, if I blow, what are, what are you going to do? It's not, I'm not even going to be bothered about it. So I decided what I was going to do. And that's one thing you should also make up your mind to do. Now, so how I balance my, balance my personal life with comedy and work is, I had decided before now what I was going to do and what I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to do. And two, I create time to rest. Mm. Time, like I'm talking to you right now, I needed the time before now to sort out some personal things. And that was why I was a bit late to, to join you and I apologize again for that. But it had to be done. That time had already been allotted. So, but again, I needed to be here too. So I, let me see how I can balance. So what I did was I devoted time to that and it succeeded. Just before I came on, it succeeded. And then I apologize for eating part of your time. But then I'm making up for it by you know, communicating with you from my heart. So yeah, it's the balance. And once I'm done from this place, I'm gonna gonna have something to eat, then lie down and sleep till tomorrow morning. Oh. Maybe I'll be in the middle of the night. So <laughs> once I leave this uh, 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 streamyard platform, I'm just going to shut down and relax, no work again till tomorrow. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. So that balance is necessary. It's very mm. necessary. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that wow. we, the first time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We really appreciate um, that your response to that. So it shows more of, um, you know, people having decision-making skills, you know, deciding, you know, even for the future. And there was also something you made mention of that I think comedians, remaining comedians in Nigeria can learn from. You made mention of the fact that, you know, people told you their children were actually watching your, you know, comedy series and you had to create um, um, a character for, you know, for children. I think that was one place where comedians in Nigeria are getting it wrong. They don't even realize that younger, you know, younger viewers actually watching their comedy they just you know they put in sexual and they don't know that children are you know learning this thing whether directly or indirectly so i think nigerian other nigerian comedians can actually do better you know okay now so on, on to the last question before you give your final words and final advice to nigerians and young people watching from home so um i want you you know to say something about politics in nigeria you know um your first comedy skit that actually was you know that was many years ago I was the one where you were singing and dancing, um, chop five for the people. Um, ah. yeah, whatever the people. Yeah, that, that comedy really went very hard. Well, you know, when I saw that video then, I saved it on my phone. Anytime I hear of any disappointing news in Nigeria, I'll go and watch that comedy. Now, I just want to set it up. <laughs> yeah, you know, it actually said a lot. It actually said a lot about our, our political system in Nigeria and, um, I want you to um what is your approach to political problems in Nigeria and how do you how do you think you how do you think you coming in into politics and away from even comedy? Do you have any relations with politicians in Nigeria? Do you advise them maybe um from a technical aspect as a scientist and agriculturist or from you know the entertainment aspect as a comedian? Do you and do you also believe in the new Nigeria? So I just want you to say your overall thoughts on politics before you give us your final word. Wow. That is a huge, huge question. First of all, let me appreciate the two of you guys are amazing. It's been a while since I had very intelligent and listening hosts like you guys. A lot of the time, people have questions they want to ask you. And you're asking questions. They are not even paying attention, but I've been watching you guys. Your questions have been follow-ups to what I've been saying. You're listening and taking notes at the same time. I don't know how you're doing it, but it's amazing. And I think you guys have a bright future ahead of you. In media, if you want exactly. to do that. Even in your personal lives, you already have mastered the skill of listening and understanding, which is where I'm going to start from. A lot of Nigerian young people haven't mastered any skill at all. And it's appalling. It's sad. It's disheartening, to say the least. Mm -hmm. You see young people, the only thing they know is football and probably reality TV show. It's really sad. They haven't mastered any area of life. Science, art, music. Even the ones that say they are musicians or they want to go into music, you ask them the basics of knowledge of music. They tell you they don't need to know. So some person does not know anything and it blew. And that sense of blowing. And you begin to wonder, there are principles to everything in life. There are principles to, yeah. uh, there's a principle to why you have electricity. If you don't have electricity in your area, there's a principle to why, principle to why you don't have. You understand? If you are gaining weight, there's a principle to it. If you are losing weight, there's a principle. Everything in life is 
governed by principles. And the smarter you are, I mean, the more you align yourself with those principles by learning them, mastering them, and applying them, the smarter and more successful you are likely to be. Now, going to the point. So you have asked a lot of questions. Some of the questions that I usually don't like to talk about or go into, but I'm going to attend to you. For, for your sakes, I'm going to attend to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I don't have any personal or direct um, relationship with any politician that I know of right now. Uh, but I'm not an enemy to anybody. I'm friends with anybody. Like the general saying goes, I belong to everybody and I belong to nobody. So I'm not against anybody and I'm not for anyone, you know, simply because I like to be apolitical. I like to be neutral. My message demands that. I'm not a friend to any political party. I'm not a stooge to any political party. I don't have any godfather anywhere. I speak my, the truth from my mind as I see it after doing my proper research and asking questions. Once I see the fact before me, I make a, an informed comment about it from my perspective and hoping that it's going to inform and, you know, ginger other people to start having positive thoughts about how Nigeria can change. Because let's face it, what we have right now might not be the way we want to change to. Now, that answers your question. I don't have any direct political affiliation with anybody, any political party. I'm apolitical. Politics, the way it's practiced in Nigeria at the moment, is even scary. It's and repulsive. A lot of young people who want to go into it might not want to go into it. People like me, simply because of the, what you see the people that are there right now doing, it's, uh, it's scary. That's not an excuse not to participate. So what do I do in politics? What do I participate? I'm a voice. I'm like a mirror. When you stand in front of me, I show you how the mirror sees you, you know, to see yourself. So I do parodies and satires, political parodies and satires, so the society can see what we are in comedic form. Non-offensive, I'm not calling anybody's name. I'm just looking at what is already in the public domain, the videos, the audio, the information. I build humor around it to pass a message and ask questions. Is this the way it's supposed to be? That is my job as a, as a satirist, as a comedian, as a comedian who does political satires and do social commentary. So that's my job. That's what I do. You know, Give you a bit of humor, a dose of humor and comedy and laughs, and then prick your conscience at the same time. That's what I do. Um, do I want to go into politics or politics. political appointments? Maybe not politics, maybe leadership. Mm. And why leadership is not because I have a dream to govern or rule anybody. No, I don't believe in that. The best leader is a servant. Forget it. If any politician or any leader you ever, you ever meet in your life does not agree with that policy, run away from them. The best leader is a servant. If you can't put yourself at the level or sometimes below the people you are serving, you can't lead them because you can't think like them. You can't feel what they feel. And you are definitely probably not even going in the direction they want to go to. So you are, you are taking a stroll all by yourself. Nobody is following you. You don't have followers. So what do they realize when they realize they don't have followers? They become rulers. They begin to use military arm, scare tactics. They begin to use harassment to force you to fear them. And that is not what a leader is. A leader doesn't make you fear them. A leader walks in the direction that you want to go in. And then they show you how they got there. And then you naturally trust them and you hold their hand and say, take me with you. Don't leave me. The best mm. don't leave me challenge is the don't leave me that a follower will tell a leader that is going yeah, in the direction that we want to go yeah. to. You understand? Wow. So that is the best don't leave me. That is the actual challenge that our leader should be going for. Don't leave me challenge. So <laughs> now, um, um, what I would say about politics is um, if in the line of my what I do, anybody, wherever it is, or any government sees that I have one or two ideas that they want to share, of course, as a professional, I'm going to charge you for it. No hard feelings about that. Now, my work, I they do. You want to pick my book, of course, you're going to pay for it. I didn't come to this world to come and say, Girl, not for other people. No, no, no. I have bills to pay. So if you want to pick my brain, you need my professional counsel or you need my effort or you need my supervision, my energy to do something. There might be a charge for it. If it's not pro bono, then there definitely will be a charge for it. I can consult or know that. I might do that. But right now, I don't have any admission to carry ballots and say, come and vote for me. Not at this moment. I don't think it's, think it's that bad yet. <laughs> you know, Maybe in the future, that might change. I don't know. But right now, I'm just living in the moment right now. And the moment I'm living in right now is to speak as much as possible using humor to encourage the good Nigerians, young Nigerians out there, not to give up, but to keep working on themselves. That even if the Nigeria we want is not going in the direction we want yet, your life can be going in the direction we want for now. When Nigeria is ready, it will catch up. But it will be bad if Nigeria is catching up and you personally are not catching up. So my message to the young people is keep working on yourself. 
keep reading. Mm. Surround yourself with the right clique of guys and girls. If you're a guy, oh, surround man. yourself with the right people. If you're a babe, surround yourself with the right people. Surround mm. yourself with the right information. Mm. The kind of music wow. you listen to, the kind of books you read, the kind of entertainment you consume will ultimately affect your, your mind. If it doesn't mm. turn your mind to the negative, it will, it will turn your time to zero. It will waste your time for you. And I did you have nothing. So mm. balance your entertainment and self-improvement. Let's not deceive wow. ourselves. Wow. So that's wow. It. Thank you so wow. much, sir. sir. Before you go, I just love uh, about three skits that you do that I just want to play that I really love that I save in this place. Baby Lalo, come. Mama. What's that in your hand? Bring it. This is bitter leaf now. Ah, vegetable of elders. What? What about that one? Is that not scent leaf? Bring oh, it. Wait a second. I just wasting vegetable. Hey, you know for euro. You know for lata. This one I use it to prepare for lockdown. What? You don't know. If somebody prepared this one now, they put locust beans, they put onion, confuse it with crayfish. When you say pepper, you say presence. Sir. Mm. You put two spoon of pepper. You mm. pour the whole thing. Mm. You put dry fish. You put shower and agudo. Face my face. You. Catfish head. Everybody balance together. Add for mom. You carry goat beans. You jello jello part of the leg. Soup done done. And for lockdown. Ah. It's just that I don't have pepper. I don't have fish. I don't even have a hoy. <laughs> wow! That's the second one before you go. It might sound safe, but we can't all be specialists. We can't, no. Some will be farmers. Some will be politicians. <laughs> the man who sold my gown is a doctor. Make the best down. Are they pay, being paid a hazard allowance for the job that they are doing? I am not aware of it. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your presence. Wow. Thank you so that much. Was, Forward to inviting you in October for our e, um, the heart of e commerce, um, the mm. heart of e marketing. Yeah, the heart of e marketing. We'll be looking forward to have you again, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. God bless Thank you. you. So I really you. Yeah. Yeah. I've been really, really impressed that you know to see young people like you before used to be old grown men. That you know, but I'm, I'm happy to see young folks like you use technology positively like this, you know. Uh, even though this lockdown has made a lot of things difficult, I mean, you are looking for avenues to keep in, enriching your minds, enriching yourselves, and inspiring yourselves. I grew up surrounding myself with people that inspired me in music, people that inspired me in arts and sports, you know. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, read their stories. I wasn't necessarily the ethical type, or no, so trust me, you know. But I, I just threw myself into things I wanted, things I love. You know? Probably you heard me say it before 30 days. I just felt like I should be able to speak French now, not to do me. And I went and bought a book and a cassette. And for 30 days, I was listening to it. After 30 days, I started listening, speaking and, and hearing and understanding French. And meaning, yeah. if I can do it, you guys can do it. Anybody else can do it. I mean, I just like challenges. I just throw myself at challenges. There's nothing I wanted to do. All this, this past couple of years in my house, I've removed the gearbox of my car and fixed it. The, the valve body of my car. Just before you came yeah. to me now, I was fixing the fuel pump of my car. I removed the fuel tank from the car. I, I spent eight hours fixing that stuff. But guess what? Wow. At the end of the day, it worked. This is the thing that I would have taken to a mechanic. They would have given me two or three days to come back and they would have charged me and they might not have done as good, as good a job as I wanted to done. So what am I trying to say? If you're an engineer out there, you guys, whatever it is, you, can, you guys can do it. And you know, I hope time is going to come when young people are actually going to have practical experience to solve problems. Problem solving skills. So that anybody deceive you. It's good to go to school and get certificates. The question is what problem can you solve? No matter how many certificates sure. you have. They're assuming that you have books in your head that can solve problems. If you come to the office and you're not in type, an ordinary pen and pencil problem in the office you cannot solve, it's just to collect salary and speak big English. They will sack you. So at the end of the day, what can you do for yourself? What problem can you solve? I want to encourage you guys, everywhere you go to, look around you. What's the problem I have around here? What problem is there in this place? What can I do to solve it? Keep it for yourself. You never know. Somebody can yeah. call, call you one day and say, do you have a solution to this problem? We're ready to wow. pay you for consultancy. And that might be your first time and your first million. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you, sir. And, sir, this, this is my first 
this is my first event I'll be doing online. I'll be doing a several event live, and this 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 should be the six years I will be doing. I started doing event at the age of thirteen when wow. I looked at life, li lifestyle of Jesus. That if Jesus can do it, I can do it also. And I look the life of other uh, mentors because I'm honorable Dario Israel's PA personal. I work with Dario Israel as his PA. So I really, really learned from so many people. Even Stevie Akitayo, um, Daniel Malik, he also is also um, Shola Anima Shaun. Shola, wow. We just did a section for Shola Anima Shaun in this afternoon around yeah. 1 p.m. And Dr. Right. Kweba Wu. So we, we I really have a great mentor. Even you two, sir, uh, your skit and everything really mentor me. Keep it up. Keep it even up. if yeah. I don't meet you one on one, I, I sure I've not even met you one on one. I just have your contact and you you show up. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. I really appreciate this. Sir. I would love to meet you after the pandemic when we do a live show. I would love you to be there and the October on to the online one. Thank no you problem. so much. I'm we're, we're expecting more content from you, sir. No problem. Thank you for the yes, support. Sir. I yeah. And so I hope you don't mind I get your contact, sir. No problem. My contact is everywhere. Okay. So it's not a good call. Okay, sir. If you, don't, if you can't reach me, send me an email. Okay. Or send me a DM. Send me a DM on WhatsApp, um, on Instagram, Twitter. Send me a DM. Sometimes that's faster. But emails, I don't joke with my emails. I'm an up because. That's the truth. Mm. I might not yeah, yeah, you don't listen to me. You don't listen to me. But, but, but sometimes, because I might be in the studio, I might be on set, I might be driving, I might be in a meeting. Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, but mm. I, have a, I have a team. If it's business or if it's something like that, mm. like that, I have a team. They will answer you. They will respond to you. If they miss your call, yeah. they will call you back. You know, I have a couple of numbers. But if you go to my, my, Insta, my Twitter profile, my Instagram profile, there's a number there. The email is there. I respond to it. I don't joke with those numbers. And I don't joke with my emails. Yeah. And also DMs that are meaningful. I don't joke with DMs that are meaningful. Wow. Yes, yeah, sir. Wow. Before you go, this last it. Introducing social banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. So I understand your name is Frank. Donga, is that correct? Donga. Okay, Mr. Frank. You're here for a visa application. Is that correct? No, no, ma, it's visa. I've already done the application. That's what I said. A visa application. Yes, ma. No, ma, the visa. I need visa. I, I apply online. I've done the application online. How long do you intend to stay, Mr. Donga? As, as soon as we are finished, I go. They say it can't take long. No, no. How long do you intend to stay in my country, Mr. Donga? Ah, okay, ma. I can't stay long. I have something to do. You understand? Soonest. Soonest. Once I come back, I have a lot of things to do. Can you give us a time estimation, Mr. Donga? Ma. Can you give us a length of time for which you'll be away, Mr. Donga? No, I can't be away, ma. As soon as, once I finish everything, I, I return. Can you convince me that you'll return? I, I can convince you, ma. I can convince you. Why would you return, Mr. Donga? Ma, you know this place is not my place. Then yeah. anybody that is like market. You go to the market, you have to come back. You go, then you come back. So that's the thing. That's the plan. That's the plan. It's already there. Okay, what do you do for a living, Mr. Donga? You say? What type of work do you do? I'm a professional, man. I'm a professional. And somebody that is a professional now. Any work. Why would you like to visit my country? Yes, ma'am. It's like, since when I small, I've always had it in mind that abroad is a place that anybody who's a professional, anybody wants to get to a professional level, goes abroad. By the time you come back, your destiny is not 
or not again. So that's the thing. Because by the time, even as you understand, stay, stay seated. no man, ahead. because I want to show you. As I was growing up, I have it in mind that when the time I travel to abroad, then as a professional, I come back. That's it, man. Tell me why you'd like to visit my country, Mr. Donga. The because if you had, America is a place that any a professional he has to kneel down and pray. That once you go to abroad, America, you come back, your destiny is no longer the same. V I visit all the important area. Martin Luther King, Washington DC, all these people. What, because you have to know them. Mr. Donga. Yes, ma'am. We give out British visas here, Mr. Donga. This is the British Embassy. You can help me, you can give me that one too, of course. British. I, I can go, then I'll come back to you. You can give me. Thank you very much, Mr. Donga. Thank you, ma'am. Should I collect it now? You can go down, Mr. Donga. I should wait for that. Ma, you said I should wait. Wow, thank you so much, Daddy. We are really wasting your time so much. Thank you so much, yeah. Daddy. Okay. The, he's now my dad. The fact is now my dad. Dad, <laughs> Daddy, thank you so yeah, much. I appreciate thank you guys. Thank you. See you another time, Dad. Mm, I love it. We really love you okay. from Drive Innovative Africa. Drive Innovative Africa. We know we, we innovate young people to do great things. And if I can be doing this, I think you young people outside there too can be doing this also. Can be um, motivating and bringing up some things, some issues in this country. So I'm also looking up to go and do my event in London, all over the world. I, I know that this one is going viral. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye for now, sir. We'll be yes, recording sir. the available on YouTube or any link. Are we, are we yes, on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Please it's send me YouTube. the link when it's ready. Send me the okay, link. sir. Yeah. From okay. TV so much, at gmail.com. That's my email. Just send me the link there. Okay, sir. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Bye, for that, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, wow. Tonight is going to be a um, great session, also with um, uh, Kolade Shegun Okeowo. That is K O H. Is a um, gospel um, evangelist drama. Uh, what, what, what should I call this? But is a dramatist, uh, evangelist, sir. Yes, he's into evangelism and drama. On so join us this evening by seven o'clock. Um, uh, how many minutes left? Yeah, by seven o'clock, so that we can have a great time. That's about 40 thank minutes, you. man. Okay, thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs>